Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Previously, we covered one archetype that got a boost from Power of the Elements, but outside of some creative deck building, Math Mech Circular is only going to be improving its own deck. Today, we'll be talking about a card that supports a rather innocuous archetype, but its lack of restrictions and powerful swarming capabilities have put it on combo players' radars, looking to see just how far it can be pushed. Premiering in the October 2017 core set, Circuit Break, Crawlers hit the scene as the second archetype in the World Legacy storyline, and as another of Konami's attempts to create a slower-paced control deck centered around flip-effect monsters. I frame it like this because these attempts end in either abject failure, like Tindangle, or evolve into powerful combo decks like Shadal. Though there is the rare case that the deck actually does embody its control roots with extreme competency, in the case of Subterra though ended up shaving most of what made that deck unique. Currently, the deck is in a bit of a tindangle situation, but could very easily take on Shadal level powers should the right combos be discovered. So let's look over our bug collection to see who we've got, learn the intricacies of buggy flip, then see if there are any more members we can add to their neural network. It's time to get creepy with crawlers. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 30k, where we'll have Jack Atlas Explained, which includes Resonators, Red Dragon Archfiend, and whatever other cards were used by the Masta of Fosta! We've also got our Discord, where people find all kinds of ways to occupy their time. I'm also on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools, and don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with crawlers? Well, they're a series of Earth attribute insect type monsters. Many of their names refer to parts of brain cells, which lines up with their in lore trait of having a hive mind. The main deck core monsters are all level 2 and all have flip effects, while sharing another effect. If this face-up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon two crawler monsters with different names from your deck in face-down defense position, except another copy of itself. This is kind of odd design considering this is the deck that wants to have their monsters hit the field in face-down defense position. Shadal's got around this by having a templating that forced your opponent into a lose-lose situation. Either you remove the face-down monster with an effect, triggering a Shadal effect, or attack into it to trigger a different effect, usually a worse one. But left as is, you can effect remove a crawler while it's in face-down defense position and no one will bat an eye. Though the idea is that you want your opponent to think they can do this, then flip your crawler up with a quick effect from another card, though broadly looking at them you'd hardly know this was the case. Let's start with Crawler Axon. They have 500 attack and 1800 defense, and their flip effect can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. Have you ever wanted a mystical space typhoon that was also a monster? Well now's your chance. It also has the fun distinction of being able to destroy your own spells and traps, so if you have a card you want to trigger a destruction effect on, or you have an annoying floodgate you no longer want to deal with, Axon can axe it. Crawler Dendrite has 1300 attack and 1600 defense, and their flip effect can send a monster from your deck to the gr- Whoa, whoa wait hold up, send a monster from your deck to the grave? Not a crawler monster! A monster. Um, wow, uh, I guess you can print stupid broken stuff on cards as long as you make them flip effects, huh? Well, uh, if you ever wanted to splash crawlers into a deck that loves graveyard effects, this crawler's the dend right one for the job. Crawler Gleal has 700 attack and 1500 defense, and their flip effect can special summon a crawler monster from your hand or grave in either face up attack position or face down defense position, except a copy of itself. So if you run into this crawler, they get replaced by another. And if you have a setup grave, this is probably one of the best monsters you can summon off of the generic crawler floating effect, since it'll handle Gleal of your needs. Crawler Ravnir has 1100 attack and 900 defense, and their flip effect can target up to two crawler monsters in your grave and add them to your hand. Now that seems a little slow, since we normally need to take two turns to reset those monsters, unless we want to use them as discard fodder for something. But trust me, we actually have a card that combos with this to speed things up. Which is great, because otherwise we're moving ahead at a crawl. Crawler Receptor has 900 attack and 1200 defense, and their flip effect can add a crawler monster from your deck to your hand. Which is another really good starter. Receptor gets flipped, add Gleal, 
flip Gleol, summon back Receptor. You can keep doing this for as long as you have copies of them, or you just search into another crawler that can do some problem solving. Either way, they're all part of a big helpful team, so they'll be treated to a warm reception. Crawler Spine is kind of the mascot of the theme, and they have 300 attack and 2100 defense, and their flip effect can target a monster on the field and destroy it, which seems like a weird name if they're supposed to be named after brain cells, so I looked it up and it's referring to dendritic spines, these little feelers at the end here. So it's less backbone spine and more porcupine spine. <laughs> Oh, we rhyme to ignore the fact that Maneater Bug has been power crept out of existence. Sometimes I miss old Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, now it's time to talk about our really spicy crawlers, and this first one is the one everyone's doing a wig out over. Crawler Soma is a level 6 monster with 2000 attack and 2500 defense, and while this card is in the hand, they can target a face-up monster you control, special summon Soma from the hand, and if you do, change that monster to face-down defense position. Also, it can't change its battle position for the rest of the turn. And during your main phase, you can reduce this card's level by 2 or 4. And if you do, special summon crawler monsters with different names from your hand, deck, or grave, whose total levels equal the amount reduced, in face-up or face-down defense position. Now, why is this making everyone go ballistic? Well, for the main deck cost of running 3 Soma and 2 differently named level 2 crawlers, you can put Utopic Draco Future on board, plus prime any of your crawler flip effects to go off whenever you like, with the added bonus of getting to use any flip synergy your own deck might have. Here's how it works. Get one of your monsters on the field however you want, then flip it down while special summoning Soma. Use its effect to summon two crawlers, at least one of which has to remain face up. Now Soma is level 2, at which point you can exceed summon Ghost Trick So Cute Boss. Yup, we're doing it again, Ghost Trick community! You get the added benefit of popping a monster with 1300 or less attack, then you can overlay for Angel of Mischief, detaching the So Cute Boss to get shot, which will revive So Cute Boss, make another Angel of Mischief, using its effect to search Ghost Trick Scare, then overlaying both into Utopic Future, then upgrading them into Utopic Draco Future. Set the scare, and now you can activate the effect of the face down crawler next turn whenever you'd like. And if the monster you flipped face down does something good when flipped, then all the better. Granted, this means you're also using up 5 extra deck slots and 2 more main deck slots for shot and scare, but this play sequence only shows off SOMA the cool things you can do with this card. Deus Ex Crawler isn't just one of the most famous immersive sims ever made, it's also one of our most special monsters. They're level 9 and have 2000 attack and 3000 defense, and when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets this face down monster as a quick effect, you can change this card to face up defense position to negate the activation and if you do, destroy that card. That's right, we've got another weird monster that has an activated effect while face down. Absolutely wild. After this card has been flipped face up while it's in the monster zone, negate all monster effects activated on your opponent's field. This works kind of like a one-sided skill drain, except it's actually better, because it negates effects activated on the field, not the effects of monsters that are on the field. So while this doesn't stop continuous effects, even if those monsters leave the field as cost, like Prank Kid's Battle Butler, Deus here will still stop it. And if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add a level 9 monster with a different original type and attribute than this card from your deck to your hand. That last part is more to keep it in line with the level 9 World Legacy Monstrosity monsters, but if you're running Prediction Princess Tarot Ray, then I guess you have an extra searcher for them. Deus Ex Crawler is one of the most threatening things about crawlers right now. Triggering a single one of the level 2's floating effects gets you a 3000 defense body that resists targeted interaction, and if you manage to flip it up, your opponent's entire monster lineup freezes. No DPE effect, no Borrowload Savage, no Wandering Griffin Rider, everything gets tanked. That's not to say it's impossible to get over, there are some big monsters in the extra deck, not to mention you can still clear it out with spells and traps, but barring access to those, Deus Ex isn't just this card's name, it's also what's going to have to happen for your opponent if they want to out this. Now, this next one isn't a crawler, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring them up. See, each of the World Legacy archetypes has a World Legacy monster that was released alongside, or around the same time as them, that's meant to support and work with that archetype. And for crawlers, that's World Legacy World Armor, a level 7 Dark Machine monster with 2500 attack and defense. And when a monster is flip summoned, you can special summon this card from your hand. Cue the flip summoned crawlers summoning a giant suit of sci-fi mecha armor from the sky. Now, while this doesn't trigger when your monsters are flipped up in general, you have 
to legit flip summon them, this also triggers on your opponent's flip summons. So if you book them and they try to get their monster back in fighting shape, they're in for a nasty surprise. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a world legacy card from your deck to your hand. And if this normal summoned or set monster is on the field as a quick effect, you can target a face up monster your opponent controls that was special summoned from the extra deck and return both that monster and this card to the hand. Yeah, that's one of the weird quirks with world legacy cards. Many of them have an effect that only applies if they were normal summoned or set, even though that's incredibly resource intensive, especially compared to what effects they give you. However, ignoring that, when you do get the free special summon, you get a card out of it. And in a deck of monsters with very, very low attack stats, running world armor gives you the offensive push you need to actually close out games. Trust me, it makes a world of difference. Alright, that's all of our main deck monsters, now it's time for the extra deck ones. And like their main deck counterparts, they share a few similarities. On top of still being earth insects, they're all link 2, and if they're destroyed by battle while face up, or leave the field because of an opponent's card effect while under their owner's control, you can target two crawler monsters in your grave with different names and special summon them in face down defense position. This means you can't float your link crawlers into more link crawlers, but it can revive deus ex crawler, so keep that in mind. First is Xcrawler Nuragos, a link monster with 1900 attack, requiring any two insect monsters as material. While on the field, crawler monsters this card points to can't be destroyed by battle, gain 300 attack and defense, and if they battle your opponent's monster, any damage they inflict is doubled. Now, this can work in two different ways. Either you set a crawler in a zone that Nuragos points to, in which case you are highly telegraphing that it's a crawler so your opponent won't attack into it, or you make another link crawler at one of those link points so it has an attack stat worth leveraging that double damage effect. Heck, you could make two Nuragoses that point to each other, so neither can be destroyed by a battle and they both deal double damage. Now, pointing fingers is rude, but pointing arrows at each other, that's just common courtesy for crawlers. Xcrawler Synaphysis is a link monster with 1800 attack, requiring two earth monsters as material. Crawler monsters they point to can't be destroyed by a battle, gain 300 attack and defense, and can make two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Looks like somebody got jealous about math mechs and decided they wanted to be a big battle archetype too. Point this at a monster that Nuragos is pointing to and you'll have a double attacking, double damage dealer before for too long, granting so much power that, honestly, is gonna leave me needing a synapsis after we're all done here. Our last monster is Xcrawler Quailiarch, a link monster with 2000 attack, requiring any two crawler monsters as material. Uh, this isn't really related to anything, but this does mean that these link monsters have the same kind of material patterning as Bujins. One of the monsters needs specifically named material, one needs the theme's attribute, and the other the theme's type. Uh, non-beast warriors notwithstanding. Anyway, Quailiarch has accumulating effects depending on the number of crawler monsters you control. If you have two or more, all of your monsters gain 300 attack and defense. If you have four or more, your opponent can't activate cards or effects during the battle phase. Note that this isn't one of those Armades type effects that only restricts effect activation after attacking. It's the whole battle phase, so your opponent isn't going to be able to wait until the start step of the battle phase and sneak something through you. Once both players agree to move to the battle phase, they are locked out. And if you have six or more, your monsters can attack directly. Now, this does perform a bit of a non-bow with Nuragos and Synaphysis, since they're double attack attack double damage effects can only be done through monsters, but their attack is so much higher than your main deck monsters that if you can manage to enable the direct attack while linking up into them, I'd still recommend it. And this has all gotten a lot more accessible thanks to the introduction of Soma. Super combos aside, they're a great way to get a free Link 2 onto the board by themselves, giving you quick access to Quailiarch, and thus, a way to get your other Link 2s into the main monster zones to start granting battle buffs. I also like how the 6 plus effect lets you direct attack, tying into how a horde of these things could just overrun your defenses by sheer numbers alone. If you've ever wanted a Zerg Rush in Yu-Gi-Oh, this is how you do it. Alright, that's all of our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. And something you might notice pretty quickly is that we don't actually have very many that are name stamped to our theme. A lot of the spell and trap support among the world legacy archetypes is just 
under the Umbrella World Legacy name, which means that they can sometimes overlap with each other, leading to some interesting combinations. First, we have World Legacy Survivor, a normal spell that depicts the one surviving crawler after their battle with the World Chalice crew, who will one day become extremely adorable, and I want 80 plushies of them. It excavates the top 5 cards of your deck, and if you do, add any excavated crawler monster or World Legacy card to your hand. Also send the remaining cards to the grave. If you can't, you just shuffle all those excavated cards back into the deck. And regardless, for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck except Link Monsters. Oh no, whatever will we do? We can only summon the highly generic and flexible Link Monsters. Uh, sarcasm aside, this is a great way to get you to your support cards or crawlers that you might need, all the while filling up your grave. There isn't much on theme that cares about the grave, mind you, but if you mix them with something else, you might get some fun benefits. Heck, since it excavates, you could make Crawler Sylvans. The combination of insects and plants would make Naturia proud. World Legacy in Shadows is our deck's field spell, and it grants all of our crawlers a 300 attack and defense boost. Once per turn, you can special summon a level 2 or lower insect monster from your hand in face up or face down defense position. Once per turn, you can special summon a level 2 or lower insect monster from your hand in face up or face down defense position. And when your flip monster is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster, you can send that opponent's monster to the grave. Youch! Talk about a battle deterrent! It doesn't destroy, it doesn't target, it just sends. And you can even trigger this yourself. Usually there'd be some kind of restriction, like it only triggers if your opponent attacks, but you can crash into your opponent's monsters on your turn and get that trade. It's also nice to see that it helps turbo out your crawlers from hand, though it sucks our opponent will know what we set, kinda ruining the element of surprise. A quick, someone tech in shifting shadows, we need to maintain our tactical advantage. World Legacy's Mind Meld is a normal trap that activates when your opponent it activates a monster effect while you control a crawler monster, changing that effect to return one face-up monster your opponent controls to the hand. You can also banish this card from your grave to target a link monster on the field to special summon a crawler monster from your hand, deck, or grave to your side of the field to a zone that target points to in face-down defense position, but you can only use one effect per turn and only once per turn. I'm... I'm torn on this. Effect replacement is usually so good, and while there are a lot of things worse than a non-targeting compulsory evacuation device, this is one that doesn't target and we have very little synergy with this effect. If we have a Link monster on board, this sets us back something fierce. I can't imagine why this wasn't change one of your opponent's defense position monsters to attack or something like that. Heck, even your opponent chooses a monster to return to their hand would have been something because then you could put a crawler back into your hand that you could set later, but this, this is just, at least the grave effect exists, and it works great with Survivor. While it can't turbo out our links because the summon does have to be in face down defense position, it still gets a monster on board, and if we have an effect that flips monsters up, then we're off to the races. Hmm, speaking of mind meld, wonder what that little guy is thinking. World Legacy Pawns is a continuous trap that lets you target a face down defense position monster you control and change it to face up attack or defense position, an absolute godsend for this deck. As I mentioned earlier, you can flip up your monster in response to removal to get all the benefits, or just flip them up to get their effect as needed. You can also shuffle a crawler monster from your grave into your main deck, so no recycling links, then target a face up monster you control and change it to face down defense position, letting you reset your crawlers for more effects. Or to dodge stuff like Effect Valor. Really, Book of Moon can help you do a lot of things. However, you can only use one effect per turn and only once per turn. Yeah, you want to see this as early as possible because it makes your deck a lot more proactive and lets you combo even more with Soma. While the monster you flip down can't change its battle position, that only means it can't be changed manually, so pawns can still flip it up and you get the effect trigger. The second effect can also be used to flip down Soma because once you flip it back up, all of its levels come back, so you can use the effect again. Though, uh, I think we need to call a judge about what's going on in the card art here. I don't think they give you enough zones to summon that many crawlers. 
Our last card is Crusadia Crawler, a continuous trap that special summons itself as an effect monster, though is still treated as a trap card. And they're a level 2 earth insect monster with 300 attack and 2100 defense, exactly like Spine. And if this card is special summoned to a zone a link monster points to, you can add a world legacy card from your deck to your hand. So even without dipping into the Crusadia half of this card, you can just summon this to a point one of your own links point to and get Survivor, which can search you another card, or can get you pawns so you can flip up your monsters on your terms. And from that point, it's a free special summon to help with your Link summons. Or, if flipped face down because of pawns, it'll return to your spell and trap card zone, at which point you can reactivate it, summoning to another Link pointed zone to get another search. And bonus? After looking more thoroughly at the art, it looks like Crusadia Crawler gets a little version of Crusadia Maximus's crown that's so precious! So that's all the Crawler cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we're not exactly a powerhouse, but if Quailiarch, combined with our general control effects, are any indication, we want to drag out the game until we can summon a whole horde of Crawlers, attack directly with all of them, ending the game on the spot. To that end, we're gonna need a lot of swarming and a lot of stun, so what can we play to help them? out. Well, it might be useful to look at other World Legacy cards and see if any of them help out our game plan. As with many Link decks, World Legacy Succession can get you a monster out of your grave, and is searchable off of Survivor. Hey guys, Christian the Editor here, just popping in to let you know real quick that in terms of World Legacy Succession, if you want an extra way to search it, Lib the World Key Blade Master is always an available option to you, provided you use something like World Legacy World Armor or World Legacy World Crown in your deck that you can use as Link material, and then be able to climb up into that Lib later. Once you have Lib established, you can search for something like Succession or Survivor to be able to use immediately during that turn or you can even search for an extra tech like World Legacy Awakens that will allow you to link summon on your opponent's turn after getting your flip effects off of your trap card for max efficiency. And if you use that Awakens to link off your Lib the World Key Blade Master on another monster into a Nightmare Unicorn, you can actually end up getting two spins back to the deck off of that one discard instead of just one. So the extra bang for your buck is definitely worth the effort. That was all I had for you. I just wanted to stop in and let you guys know that little detail really quick. World Legacy Secret can alternatively summon back Soma and Deus Ex, and if you flip them down with any of your effects, it's no longer tied to Secret if it gets removed from the field. And if you somehow link up into Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax, then you've got a zone that you can negate monster effects in. World Reassembly ain't half bad either. It'll summon out World Armor, which can then search you a World Legacy card. And since it blows itself up during the end phase, it won't get in the way of Quailiarch. A theme I always like to see splashed in with flip decks is Prediction Princess. Tarot Ray is extremely searchable with pre-preparation of rights and acts not only as another World Legacy pawns, but revives one of your flip monsters during each of your end phases. It won't revive Deus Ex Crawler because it's technically not a flip monster, but it can revive Pot of the Forbidden if you want to go that deep on flip effects. Or a you know, revive Gleal and then use that to revive Deus Ex Crawler. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. How about insect support? Well, Bee Trooper is probably the biggest name in insects right now, but much of it doesn't really gel with our playstyle. However, Sting Lancer is a free summon that can search you Fly and Sting, which is a monster negate. Dragon Bite is an interesting new TCG exclusive. It gets another crawler out of your hand, and you can banish an insect to increase the level of a monster you control by that monster's level. So you can make that crawler level 4, and since Dragon Bite is a tuner, you now have access to level 8 synchros or rank 4. For Xyz. Shadals are all flip monsters, and with the help of Soma, you can link your crawlers into Shadal Construct, which gives you access to Shikinaga while also giving you a repeatable trigger for your Shadal monsters. Alternatively, you can also summon Subterra Behemoth Fiendus, which can summon more crawlers out of your hand and search you more of them. As for a silly tech pick, while Maneater Bug might be out of contention, Mimicking Maneater Bug is pretty sweet. They can't be destroyed by battle, and it absorbs the attack of whatever it destroys, making it potentially very big. It can also take on the type of what it destroyed, and can be destroyed by effects of any monster that matches its type. Which is doubly hilarious, because while Mimicking is still mandatory, if you make it target itself, it won't be destroyed because it's its own type. It's so amazing. And that's all I have to say about Crawlers. 
these little units haven't made much of a splash, which makes each new card that comes out that much more interesting. Are we in for a new age of fortune for Flip Fanatics? That remains to be seen. Honestly, we're much more likely to see the rise of Soma being teched into various decks to act as a special summon engine. Thankfully, there isn't much one can do with level 2 monsters, so you don't have to worry very much about- Oh, come on! But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think crawlers have several legs up on the competition, or are these insects still out of date? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, Avagule, Adam Zagidel, Benjamin Meisner, Biohazard011, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxith Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Shark Tipus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Rem T. Bright the Legendary Raven, and Too Much Desu, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see another deck that has more Weevil Underwood vibes, check out this video I did covering digital bugs. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jack and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye